In this video, I'll cover the very basics of JavaScript concatenation with Webpack version 1. If you'd like to follow along with the example code, please clone this GitHub repo and you can run that code on your local machine. Let's look at webpack.config.js first. So in the module.exports object, we have a couple of properties. The first one is entry. This tells Webpack where to start looking or where to start its work. And the file that we've indicated is src example1.js. So we're saying to Webpack, look in example1.js and do whatever it is you need to do. The second property, output, tells uh, Webpack where to put its work. Um, so we're saying to Webpack, in the build folder create a file called bundle.js now you may have noticed there is no build folder yet there's a css folder a node modules folder src but no build well if webpack doesn't see a build folder it will create it and if it does not see a file called bundle.js it will create it and if it sees a file called bundle.js it will overwrite it uh, and that's the where the output or the final work of the concatenation will go. It will be in this file called build slash bundle.js. Now also take a moment to look at index.js and you'll notice there is a script file that references build slash bundle.js. So this web page is pulling in a JavaScript file which at this moment doesn't exist and there's just some empty spans. This web page should appear empty and we can kind of um, just make sure we're clear on that. If you open up a browser and then drag index.html into your browser, um, you'll notice the page is empty. But also something interesting is if you look in the JavaScript console, there's going to be an error, and that error refers to build slash bundle.js. So it's saying that it failed to load a resource. The file was not found build slash bundle.js and that's because once again that folder and file do not exist so this will kind of all make sense in that in a in a few minutes but i just want to just mainly point out that there is an html file and that file is trying to pull in a javascript file called build slash bundle.js So let's see what happens when you actually run Webpack. Uh, for that, I'll need a terminal. And I want to make sure I'm in the right folder. So I'm going to move into the code repository folder. And I also want to bring up that folder so we can see what happens. So when I uh, run the Webpack command, we should see a new folder up here titled build. And in that folder should be um, a new file called bundle.js. So I'm going to type Webpack which runs Webpack, and you'll notice there's a new folder called build, and in that folder is a file called bundle.js. Now if I delete the build folder and run Webpack again, it creates the, recreates the build folder and puts bundle.js inside of it. If I delete bundle.js and run Webpack again, it sees the folder exists, but sees the file is missing, and it creates bundle.js, and if we change bundle.js, it would have overwritten it. So um, now, remember that we were trying to pull bundle.js into our web page. So if I refresh the web page, there's still nothing because bundle.js isn't really doing anything. We're going to actually talk in a few seconds about what's in bundle.js, but let's just get rid of all that stuff and put a quick alert in there. And I'll save it. And now when I refresh the page, we see the alert. So the main thing here just to point out is that in our index.html file, we're trying to pull in bundle.js in the build folder. Whatever's in bundle.js will be executed in the page. In this case, it's just an alert, which isn't very useful to us, but there'll be more meaningful stuff there uh, in a few seconds. So what exactly happens in bundle.js and run webpack? Let's take a look at that. I'll run webpack again and look at bundle.js. Now, this is what uh, I like to call creepy webpack code. It is just JavaScript that's not fun to look at, but it is important to point out a couple of things. First, um, this top section is JavaScript that bundle that uh, webpack writes on its own and it allows webpack to do what it needs to do. I'll kind of leave it at that, but it's JavaScript that webpack needs in order for webpack 
to allow our code to run in a browser. It will always be there. It will always look the same. Every time you run bundle.js, this section will be there and Webpack will need it. But the second part is our actual code. It's the code that Webpack has um, as is has processed for us now um, keep in mind that we told webpack to look in config.js we told to look in src slash example dot one example hyphen one dot js if you look in src example hyphen one dot js there's no code here and that's why in bundle.js this section is empty if i go to example hyphen one dot js and put in something and then i run webpack and now we look at bundle.js again. Look, there's that. There's a comment. Here's the actual code um, that we put uh, in our JavaScript. Let's do something a little bit more meaningful. If I do an alert, and then run Webpack, and look at bundle.js, there's our code. So Webpack is going to always when it creates bundle.js it'll create this first section that is javascript that bundle.js that webpack needs in order to do its thing and then it will create this second section which is the result of how it's processed our javascript that allows it to run in the browser in webpack.config.js let's change the value of entry to example-2.js I'll run webpack again and then if we refresh the browser you'll see something new happens i see the sentence i want to be capital case it's a sentence that's capital case the first letter of every word is capitalized no big deal but there's a point here in example hyphen 2.js we have required a node module this node module was made possible via package.json i required it here and then i used it here and I set this variable TCC, and TCC now allows us to change this, or transform this sentence, which is all lowercase, to be capital case. And really doesn't matter what this uh, two capital case module does. The point, it's just a module that I wanted to use because it's very simple, it's very small. Um, but the pro point here is that I'm requiring a node module, and a node module cannot work in a browser it, it, it the browser doesn't understand that code so we're using it but we're telling webpack to transform it and what webpack has done if you look in bundle.js is a couple of things the first thing is it has uh, created uh, a section of code it's calling it one here that's a transformation of that node module so it's taken the actual uh, code from the node module in a node modules folder. There's a module called uh, two capital case, and that's a bunch of code we don't want to spend time on. But it's it's definitely um, JavaScript that a browser wouldn't understand. It's taken all that code and it's transformed it into JavaScript that a browser can understand. And then it has taken this line and transformed it into this line. So webpack require one is just sim simply saying our tcc variable is equal to the result of this function execution and that function execution is basically a transformation of a node module and then we can continue and say um, get the first span the inner text is tcc and transform this lowercase sentence into all capital case again it doesn't matter the capital case thing is just it's 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 a moot point. It's just to demonstrate that when we reference a node module in our code, Webpack will say, oh, I see you're trying to use a node module, and then it will transform that node module into JavaScript the browser can understand, and then make that, that transformation available to us. Now, this may seem like no big deal, but keep in mind that Webpack is doing three things. It's creating JavaScript that it needs to process uh, the code it creates. It uh, is converting our code as needed and then it's also cre uh, transforming node modules into JavaScript the browser can understand but it's putting that all into one file now normally we might have cr had to create three JavaScript tags in our page but instead we just create one we have this one script tag and we're saying hey whatever's in bundle.js let's pull it in the browser and bundle.js has a few things going on 
but we don't have to create three different script tags and worry about their order and make sure they're you know in, included in the page in the right order. We're just saying include bundle.js. All this starts to matter more when you reference multiple node modules in your code, and we're going to see that in a second. Um, you could wind up with bundle.js could be thousands of lines of code, but Webpack is transforming that node modules and then putting it all in the right order for us and just minimizing the incredible amount of tedium that, that would be required to create multiple script tags in our page. In webpack.config.js, let's change the value of entry to example-3.js and run webpack again. And if you refresh the page in the browser, you'll see there's a different message. Now, what's happening in example life in 3.js? I mean, just very, very quickly, I'm referencing every span in the page, and then I'm using these two node modules to transform this um, large number of milliseconds into um, a number of what it translates to uh, how many days, hours, uh, minutes, and seconds that is. That's not the point. The point is that I have just chosen two node modules they are very small so it's easy to see what's happening in bundle.js but I'm requiring uh, two of them now instead of one and in that transformation we see that our code references this browser safe JavaScript but there's more browser safe JavaScript being created below than there was in the previous example and that's because Webpack has done a very nice job of taking a look at our code and seeing these two require statements and saying hey in two cases you're requiring node modules those don't work in the browser so I'm going to transform those into JavaScript that will work in the browser and then I'm going to make that JavaScript available to you here and let your code run now normally if we were trying to do something like this manually um, in index.html we'd have to create multiple script tags and make sure that they're ordered the right way and Every time we made a change to example three, if we required a third node module, we'd have to transform it and put another script tag in here. And that's that's just, just tedious. Webpack does an amazing job of looking at your source code. And whenever there's a node module, it transforms that code from the node module and then takes all of that transformation and your code and bundles it up into one file. And that way you'll just you can always just reference this one bundle.js file and Webpack will do whatever it needs to do and bundle it all up or concatenate it all into one JavaScript file. And it really starts to matter when you are requiring um, many node modules, maybe tens of them, dozens of them, maybe hundreds of node modules in your code. That's when Webpack really shines because it, it's still going to allow you to reference one JavaScript file, but it's going to bundle it up into one concatenated JavaScript file for you. And you can just not worry about all that all that tedium just write your code and let webpack do all the work for you this video barely scratches the surface of what's possible in webpack and the examples are very basic but i hope it was a helpful overview and that it pointed you in the right direction